I tried to test this Vega 56 which I bought from Random Gaming in HD and when I went to test it the first time I kind of went wrong. Yeah. But not to worry though, I've fixed these issues because this thing is now performing very well so I've decided to test to see how well this thing performs at both 1080p and 1440p. But before I get into the video though, are you more of a Nvidia person or an AMD person? Let me know in the comments down below. This is the MSI Airboost Vega 56, which I did try to test, but I tested it on the wrong VBIOS because it was on the silent one and that reduced gaming performance. So I thought I wasn't going to release them benchmarking figures because it was kind of misleading because that's not what this card can actually do. However, I've done some tweaks though because I've put it onto the performance VBIOS and I've also overclocked the HBM2 memory on this thing to 950 MHz, which does result in quite a big performance leap. Also in MSI Afterburner, I've raised the power limit by plus 50%, which is absolutely huge. So this thing will be performing at its best. So essentially the first time I tested this thing, I was a uh, bit of an idiot, if I'm honest. On paper, the Vega 56 has some really appealing specs, especially for when it launched in 2017. At its core are 3,584 cores, and right next to its GPU core is eight gigabytes of HBM2 memory, which runs through an insane 2048 bit memory bus. And it's specs like these, which led it to have better performance than its Nvidia counterpart, the GTX 10. 70, even though it did consume quite a bit more power than that graphics card because this thing has a TDP rated for 210 watts. Also, to power this thing you will need two 8-pin PCIe power cables with a recommendation of a 550 watt power supply which is not what I recommend, I'd probably recommend using a 650 watt for this. However, the GTX 1070 does have cards which only has a single 8-pin PCIe power connector and you could easily run one with a 550 watt power supply. So yeah, you do get more performance with this thing, but you will be using a lot more power while doing so. Lower style cards like this MSI Air Boost model aren't exactly the best type of cooler for a graphics card that produces this much heat. However, it stayed under 80 degrees C but it did kind of sound like a jet fighter while doing so. That's something to make note of. However, the MSI Air Boost is a very high quality Vega 56 because it has a aluminium backplate, which does help with cooling, believe it or not. And it does actually have a tachometer, which shows you how much of the GPU is being used. I'd probably throw some B-roll over it or something like that, but it is pretty cool even though it is a bit gimmicky if I'm honest. So I've tested the Vega 56 at both 1080p and 1440p on my test bench system, which actually has had a few issues recently. I've had to get rid of the 32 gigabytes because the Asus motherboard just doesn't like booting with it half the time and I just didn't need that stress in my life. All of the specs have stayed the same though, so it has a Ryzen 5 5600G, 16 gigabytes of single rank dual channel 3200 MHz CL16 memory, a Sabrent 1 terabyte NVMe Gen 3 SSD, and an Acer Strix B550-F. There have been some tweaks to this graphics card which I alluded to earlier, but I have overclocked the memory to 950 MHz, and I've also raised the power slider to plus 50% as well. This will net more performance in games. So let's see how the Vega 56 gets on in 2023. First game up today is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and on the basic preset with high textures which the 8GB of HBM2 memory allows for, performance here at 1080p was pretty decent, getting 117 FPS on average with 77 FPS for the 1% low. I'd probably recommend using the basic preset just to get more frame rate in this game as it's a first person shooter, you're going to want as many frames as possible. Switching up to 1440p and it sees a reduction of 29% when it comes to the average frame rates which isn't technically ideal but 83 FPS on average is still not too bad but I'd be wanting a bit more than that in a competitive shooter like this. Next up is a newer game in my benchmarking list and that is F1 23. And on the high preset at 1080p, the Vega 56 only scored 70 FPS on average, which actually did surprise me. I was expecting a bit more than that. Maybe the high preset on this year's game is a lot more demanding than the medium preset perhaps, I don't know. 
Switching up to 1440p there, I only saw a reduction of just 12%, which is not much actually, because it got 61 FPS on average with 52 FPS for the 1% low. So both resolutions are totally playable on F123 with the Vega 56. Maybe use the medium preset, I think that's a better option here. So yeah, either way, totally playable. I've tested Fortnite at two different quality settings and I kind of wish I didn't have. I started off with the high preset which is obscenely demanding for some reason because at 1080p we only got 58 FPS on average with 44 FPS for the 1% low. Switching up to 1440p sees a massive reduction of 36% with the average frame rates going all the way down to 37 FPS. The 1% low doesn't look particularly great either at 29 FPS. I don't recommend the high preset with a Vega 56 in Fortnite. However, switching up to my more competitive settings which still keeps the DirectX 12 API, at 1080p we got 189 FPS on average with a 1% low of 128. This is much better than what it was before. Even at 1440p we see a reduction of 27 FPS going down to 138 FPS on average with a 1% low of 99. This isn't too bad and I'd just recommend playing Fortnite at these settings. It's a competitive game in a way, you're going to be wanting the frame rate, so yeah, this is what I recommend here. Rainbow Six Siege is up next and at both resolutions, the Vega 56 pushed out incredibly playable frame rates with 230 FPS on average at 1080p and we saw a reduction of 31% going down to 158 FPS for the average at 1440p. So the ultra preset at this game, it looks pretty good i don't think it's a bad looking game by any means and the frame rate's still there as well so even if you've got a 144hz 1440p monitor the vega 56 is totally fine for rainbow six siege doom eternal is a game that i haven't tested for i think way over a year now but it's still pretty demanding in 2023 especially with the vram and that is one thing I wanted to test out in this graphics card was how well the HBM performed. Setting it to the ultra preset was a good idea because at 1080p we got 151 FPS on average with a 1% low of 118, more than playable. Switching this up to 1440p sees a reduction in the average frame rate of 20% which is not too bad at all. Getting 120 FPS on average with 92 FPS for the 1% low. So Doom Eternal, there's no VRAM issues because I know this is a very VRAM hungry game. So yeah, Vega 56 in Doom Eternal, totally playable. Next game up is Cyberpunk 2077 and this is probably the game that disappointed me the most. Because with the medium preset and high textures enabled, at 1080p the Vega 56 only just about got 59 FPS, it didn't even get 60 which is a bit of a shame. Switching this up to 1440p though and the average was only 44 FPS. Considering games like this, especially as it's first person, I'd recommend getting at least 60 so enabling FSR might be a good option, especially at 1440p because I don't think the 25% performance hit at 1440p is worth it. Focusing on 1080p and I have to say the Vega 56 is still relevant in 2023. All of the games tested today, apart from Cyberpunk, got over 60 FPS on average and I thought this is a pretty good feat for a graphics card like this, especially as this thing is actually 6 years old now. Cyberpunk did disappoint me quite a bit but yet again it's kind of an Nvidia hunting ground so this was kind of to be expected. So if you want to play Cyberpunk, make sure you just get a GeForce card because AMD cards, especially the older ones, aren't too great in this title. But for the most part, the Vega 56 at 1080p, totally fine. You'll be having a great gaming experience with this thing. Switching up to 1440p though, and it's a bit harder to justify it as it has a 27% reduction in average frame rates when compared to 1080p. In esports games this isn't really a problem as the frame rates are that high anyway it doesn't really make a difference and the extra clarity of 1440p might actually help you out in these games. But where it becomes an issue is newer AAA games like look at Cyberpunk with 44 FPS on average. It's not great is it? So 1440p is certainly playable but it's not the best experience ever. So if you want a nice smooth experience at 1440p with decent graphic settings, I'd recommend something newer like the 6700 XT, which you could actually buy new for relatively decent prices now, 
or maybe something like an RTX 4070. I can't believe I said that, but the 4070 is not actually a bad deal in the 40 series, even though it's not the best, but yeah, I, I digress. But if you really want to play 1440p with this graphics card, FSR 2.1, put that onto quality or even balanced, the game won't look as good as native 1440p, that's granted, but yeah it would make it playable on this graphics card if you're in a pinch so yeah that is an option for you if you already have a beefy power supply and you don't care too much about power consumption or noise for that matter i think the vega 56 is still a very good deal here in 2023 pair this with the fact that i only paid 89 pounds for this and you can find them regularly for this price as well I think that is a pretty incredible deal if you ask me. This is if you want to play at 1080p though. For 1440p it is technically playable, like no game just refused to run or no game ran out of like VRAM or it wasn't a stuttery mess if that makes sense. But if you want to play at 1440p with this graphics card I would recommend using AMD's FSR 2.1. It's not that bad, not quite DLSS level yet, but it's still very usable and it will give you more frames at 1440p so that is an option for you also if you're technically versed and your vega 56 has samsung hbm2 memory it is possible that you could flash this to a vega 64 which should net around 10 percent more performance and this is something that i will certainly be having a look at here on the channel so if you want to see that make sure you stay subscribed and hit that notification bell because that will be coming in some amount of time i don't know when yet but i will work on it if power consumption is a problem for you or if you need nvidia features like cuda acceleration which is what i need i don't think the vega 56 is the graphics card for you here i would probably recommend getting a used gtx 1070 as they usually go for around the same price you probably won't be getting as much performance as this but you'll be using a lot less power and you could probably just overclock the VRAM on the 1070 NOA and get similar performance to this so that might be a thing to look out for. Even though the 1070 does have slower GDDR5 memory instead of the HBM2 which is found on this so yeah. If you want to shell out a bit more cash you could probably get a used RTX 2060 for around £120 or £130 which to be honest is not a bad deal because they perform similarly to a GTX 1080 but they have two gigabytes less VRAM than that and also the Vega 56 so that is something to keep in mind. However I did find an RTX 2060 Super for £150 which I will be benchmarking here on the channel so make sure you stay looking out for that. So in 2023 the Vega 56 gets my seal of approval for its 1080p performance. It's still killing it at 1080p Yes, it's not going to run every game at Ultra, you will have to lower some settings to get 60fps in the newer AAA games, which is totally fine, you've got to make compromises when you're spending £89 on a graphics card. Just as long as the power consumption doesn't bother you, or the noise, which might not even be a problem on a different model like a Pulse from Sapphire or a Nitro or something like that, because this air boost is, after all... A blower style card so with that being said i'm going to leave this video here if you like this one like it stay subscribed for more tech content and i'll catch you in the next one